Okay, I have a little bit of a random project I want to work on today. Uh, I've had one of these little uh, USB-C control boards. I actually have a box of them, but I've had these hanging around for a while, and I really didn't haven't even made time to mess with them. But uh, apparently, according to the to some posts in uh, game, uh, re yeah, console repair. Uh, group that I'm in at the console repair legion game console repair legion I believe that's the whole name right uh, these can revive the really dead batteries so well I, I've only really had one case where a battery was it just wouldn't take a charge but I could see it becoming being an issue in the future so I'm gonna play a little bit with this one now a lot of people, they will snap off, just snap off the end of a, do of a board. Unfortunately, this is my only donor board, so I am not into the whole idea of snapping off the end of it, because I still use it for measuring and stuff. But I can pull this connector, the battery connector, off. And what I did is, I'm, what I'm going to do is I grab this donor random, don you know, I guess it's a Samsung of some sorts. It's an Android of some sort. It's just a random donor board I ended up with at some point. I figured I might be able to pull the port or something if I ever get one in. Or the battery connector. So I've got this. And it has this long stretch here. That I don't care about or need. That I think I'm going to Dremel off. Let's go to the scope. I think I'll Dremel off right here where the hump is. And what I'm about to do is I'm going to scrape off a couple of points because all this big blue here is ground. I'm going to scrape off a couple of points. And I'm probably going to just solder the connector to it. And then I'll just dremel it off and I'll just have a piece of board with the connector on there. That's my plan anyway. You can do whatever you like, but this is my plan. I want a couple of nice big spots to solder those ground pads to. And I will double check that this is ground. And this almost certainly is. All of these are ground. Make sure we stay centered. Now that's going to be pretty far back. I could go up here, but I don't want to be too close to those traces either. It doesn't really matter how big we make these pads as long as we get it on there. Yeah, when you only have one donor board, you really don't want to just snap off something. They're only like 70 bucks to get one. I fixed over 100 Nintendo Switches and I still only have one donor board. That is how ridiculous it is. With the switch maker because even the even broken non-working ones are worth 70 bucks all right that's still in focus and everything cool Make this a little wider. I think we may have gone a little narrow. Push, pushing the board a bit as well. Actually, we can come a little too wide, I think. No, we're about right. I'll come in a little bit more. So we have plenty of plane to. Okay, so I'm going to dremel this, this board off. I don't mind it being big because it, it'll be easy to find. I won't lose it that easy. So I will probably make it fairly big. And then dremel this off and then we'll tin this up and then we'll remove this and put it on here. 
and then we will solder the contacts plus and minus to the proper pins on our battery connector and go from there all right we'll be back because i'm going to do the dremeling off screen okay so this is what i've come up with for my little connector holder should be perfectly fine now we'll turn on our equipment and go about removing our connector So that was a good pull. Throw the board aside. We will not be needing it further. Okay. Let's take a look at our connector. that we did on our alignment yeah we left ourselves enough room to play great I like it um, I may do is go ahead and coat this because I'm betting that is a ground plane but let me double check we probably don't want those pins making connection to ground. Yeah, so let's coat that ground plane. Don't need that causing a problem. I don't think it would because we're going to be back far enough. But let's see. I have to remember we got to solder wires onto those connectors, on the, those pins too. Um, I don't know that it's going to really cause a problem. I think we at least need to cover that top. It might be, have been easier if we'd come forward with it. But... These are the things you figure out while you're playing around. I always flip it around and go that way with it. Let's see, one and two and four and five. So if we go that way, let me double check and make sure I'm not wrong on that. I took notes. Look at our notes. All right, so one and two are for negative, four and five are positive. Connector is on the board. We may uh, do some minor hot gluing just to secure it a little more. It's pretty solid, but you have to remember you're missing, you know, five pins that would normally be soldered on the board. So.
clean that up. Question then becomes how hard is it going to be to get wires on here? So I got one, two. One, two, and I will have to figure out which direction those go to. So, let me pull up the images. I am definitely going on other people's work. This is not an original idea. Well, at least the board thing is not an original idea. All right, let me pull up here. So, Facing that direction. And I can see this from a battery if I look at the big battery. Derp a derp. So the battery goes in this way. So these last two over here and these last two over here. Negative, positive. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to make this simple so we don't have to think. Positive side. Let's see what we got for wire. I need a black and a red wire. And I fear they're somewhere deep dark into my wire bin. Alright, I'm going to come back after I find the wire. Okay, so I didn't really have wire that I thought would be small enough. So I cut a couple of pieces off of a old Arduino fan that I'm never going to use. So I'm just not into that stuff. It takes some something being of use for me to work on it. Mess with it. So probably don't need this much wire, but I. It'll just end up as waste if I don't use it. So. And I hate wasting. What I'm doing now is just stripping back the, the ends with a stripper. This wire should be small enough to tack onto those pins. We are going to tin them first. to make an attempt however we're going to have to find a way to mount this board so it will stay still we're done with the donor for now so 
see if we can utilize the stick face to hold it in place. Shift battery connector is coming along. Okay. To work now I do want to consider throwing a little bit of hot, uh, hot glue on on here to secure it a bit because I am going to be pulling batteries in and out of it it feels pretty solid but it doesn't hurt to make it more than just a little solid so I think what we will do is cut off a few small pieces of hot glue we have done this if you've watched my uh, USB FPC fix on Xbox One X I've done this before I use this method to secure it a little or give it a little more security okay. Just a little bit we don't need a lot Need like a nugget. Yeah, it's too small. That will work. I think those will work. Get off the scissors. Thank you. 
Okay, feel pretty good about that. With that, we're just trying to make up for the fact that we have five pins that are not soldered to the board. In normal circumstance, it would be. Okay, well, and then the alcohol, I think we might be ready for a test. Okay. No bridging. Nothing that can cause a problem going on. No miscellaneous wires stuck anywhere. Okay. Fairly satisfied with that. Okay. Uh, plug our battery up. Make sure it will plug in. Okay. Battery is plugged in. Switch it to bench. All right, so let's grab our OEM charger. See how we did. Mm, I would have expected it to do something. Hmm. Did I grab a dead board? I might have grabbed a dead. You know, this board might be dead. I think everything is hooked up correctly. Let's see what it's doing on the PSU. Oh, there we go. Now we got signs alive, so maybe it's five volt only. It is pulling five volt, one amp, five watts. All right, well, let's watch it and see what it does. I may have to cover those. I don't think they're going to touch, but. I doubt you can see the light, but 
Let's turn off uh, the microscope light. Maybe you can see it. There we go. Now you can see it. Okay, that's kind of neat. Does not work with the only charger, at least not in this case. I just kind of want to see if it changes or does anything. I'm not real sure what the behavior should be. This battery already had about a half a charge on it. We could measure and see what we're getting. Switch the volts, connect the meter. Okay, see what we get. See if it's drawing something or is it putting some power into the, the uh, battery? Okay, looks like we're throwing four volts in. Okay. So it's definitely putting battery in, I mean power, through. I'm going to watch it for a little while. I'll probably fast forward a little bit. Okay, uh, I'm going to pause the recording because this could end up being a 10 gigabyte file by the time this thing is done. I'm just going to let it sit, and if it gives me some sort of different result after a while, uh, you, know, you know, preferably not a fire or something, <laughs> if it gives me some sort of different result after a while, then I will come back and we'll show you the result. See, we'll be back. Okay, many hours later, it has fully charged this battery. I don't think that's really the point of the device. I think it's it's uh, probably best used to bring back bring back a battery enough for the switch to charge it because I think the switch will charge it much faster. But anyway, it's an interesting little little gadget that I think will come in handy on those cases where you know you get the flashing Nintendo screen, uh, then the switch logo, and then it shuts off. That's usually a bad battery. And we could give it a try on one of those, you know, on one of those batteries to see if we can bring it back to life. Anyway, kind of a cool thing. Okay, so let's discuss the behavior of this little unit. It took uh, several hours, uh, maybe even like three, three and a half, to take a battery from, uh, I think my battery was probably a quarter to halfway charged and it took you know uh, let's say two and a half maybe three hours to to completely charge it for to make this red light turn to blue and for and all that during that time I was monitoring the power supply and the amperage was just slowly 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 decreasing until finally it ended up on the blue and it was, it was drawing no more amps so it was fully charged so this is a, a really slow charger but i think that probably serves in bringing the battery back to life just my theory i'm just theorizing here i'm not by any means an expert on this on a battery <laughs> on how batteries work but it does seem to, to to get it there and i think that's probably how it bring you know something about how it's slowly and system you know methodically bringing the battery up probably helps in the case of a battery that 
a switch is unable to bring up by itself. So it's got limited uses. I mean, you can you can charge a battery through the PSU without this board probably much quicker if you're just wanting to charge your battery. But I think this uh, little unit's going to have its uses. Uh, we'll be able to save the clients a little bit of money in the cases where it seems like the battery's dead, but this might be able to bring it back. That might have helped in that last case I had where I had a dead battery. I was like, did this have to get another you know, a new battery. I could have tried this and maybe saved the client a little bit of money. And I'm all about saving the client a little bit of money where I can. So that's my conclusion on this board. I think it's a worthwhile thing to put together and have in your arsenal. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.